Maybe you remember being a child sitting in Christmas Eve services and hearing the great story of Jesus' birth. How in those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world and how that just set everything in motion. Mary and Joseph make their way down to Bethlehem. The angels appear to the shepherds and sing joy to the world to them. At least they put those thoughts into words. Mary and Joseph cradle the young Jesus in the manger. Luke tells us that in his gospel. Mark skips all of it. Mark just jumps right into the action. Right away, the first thing that we meet, it picks up from the end of the Old Testament. The last great prophet, the forerunner of the Messiah, John the Baptist, comes and lets people know the Savior's coming. By verse 4 of the first chapter, you understand what it's all about. The one who comes to prepare the way for Jesus preaches not a better life, but a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. That's why Jesus came, to save sinners. And, and he saves us by becoming one of us. We see Jesus baptized, just like a sinner. We see him being tempted, just like a sinner. We call it, see him gathering together a group of disciples that are just like you and me. But this isn't just a sinner. This is the Son of God who's come into the world to be the perfect person that we haven't, to bring us back to him. So he calls us to repent and listen to him and his message of forgiveness. Let's do that now. You can pause this video in just a moment and read through Mark chapter 1. I'd certainly encourage you to read that out loud and then unpause for a final thought and a prayer. One closing thought to take with you tonight. Jesus said that he came to preach the good news of God's forgiveness. Now, sometimes in the Gospels, he does these wonderful works of healing to, to draw attention to the fact that he's not just another preacher, but that this is God's perfect son among us. But a couple of times in tonight's reading, he told you, don't tell anyone what I've done to heal you. You see, he didn't want that healing ministry to distract people from the real reason that he was here, for their souls. But here's the thing. He still healed them. He didn't want that to become the focus. He was there caring for their souls, but he still cared about their other needs too. Whatever other needs you have right now, your Savior, who lives and reigns in heaven, still cares about them. Go to him in prayer with that tonight. Uh, as you wrap up this devotion, I'd encourage you to, re to say either the Lord's Prayer or Martin Luther's Evening Prayer out loud. I'll take both of those and have them appear on the screen. You can pause at whichever one that you want to say and recite that out loud. God bless you.